Ok, so now that we have the three instances ready for InnoDB cluster usage, we can create our cluster. Like I was showing you on the previous video, to create a cluster, we must be connected to one of the instances, the seed instance, and use the create cluster command. So let's start the shell. And let's establish a connection to the first instance, which is running on IC1. Note that I'm using a different command to establish a session. I'm using shell.connect. This is just an alternative to the slash c command, which I've previously used on the other video. Ok, so now that I have an established connection to IC1, I can move on and create the cluster by using the create cluster command. You've prob probably noticed that I'm using one parameter to the create cluster command, and this is a mandatory parameter which indicates the symbolic name we want to be used for the, to name our cluster. And I will use my cluster for this example. And before moving on with this, uh, the execution of this command, let me just give you some extra information about it. This command will, among other things, to deploy the metadata scheme in that instance, will verify that its configuration is correct for group application, will register it as the seed instance for this new cluster, it will create the necessary internal accounts, such as the replication user account, and will start a group application. We don't need to worry about any of this, since this is all done under the hood and it's completely transparent to the user. So let's move on and create our cluster. OK, we have some information about the process going on. Let's wait a few seconds, and that's it. The cluster was successfully created, and it was assigned to a variable, which I have named cluster. So using this variable, you can access several available admin API commands to manage clusters. If you're not sure about what to do and you'd like to get some more information about the available commands of the cluster object, you can use the online helper by using .help. Again, the, the online helper provides information about the object itself and lists the available functions of it. The one we're interested in for now is the add instance, which allows us to add instances to the cluster. So let's use it and let's add the two instances remaining to our cluster, starting with IC2. OK. OK, the instance IC2 was successfully added to the cluster, and now we repeat the process for the other instance IC3. And that's it. The three instances were added to the cluster, and we finished the setup of our three instances cluster. But now you'd like to check the status of our, your cluster, and for that we have a command, which is the cluster.status, which will provide you information and description of the cluster, and give you information about the attributes of the cluster, and also status information. So for example, the cluster name, my cluster, the primary instance, which is IC1, the status, a descriptive status text, is telling us that the cluster is online and can tolerate up to one failure, and the topology of the cluster with our three instances as expected, IC1, IC2, and IC3. You can also see the mode of each instance. For example, IC1 is currently read-write, our primary, and the other two read-only. So our cluster is up and running. But now, um, in order to provide transparent routing between the, um, the clients and your cluster, your, your server instances on the cluster, we need to deploy the MySQL router. So, let me switch to another tab on where I have the MySQL router installed. Okay, And the MySQL router needs to connect to the InnoDB cluster to fetch its metadata so it can configure itself. And for that, there is an option that is called the bootstrap option, which requires the information of the connection to one of the instances of the cluster. I'll use IC1. And also you can use the slash D option and specify a directory name. And this will uh, instruct the router to configure itself to run from a self-contained directory. And this, so this allows you to deploy multiple instances of the, the router on the same host without root privileges. So let's bootstrap the router to be ready for our specific cluster. And that's it. The router is bootstrapped and it will be listening on two TCP ports, one for writes and another one for reads. 6446 for read and writes, 
and 6447 for read-only connections. So now we have the router deployed on the directory that we named my router. And let's start it by using one of the deployed scripts, automatically deployed, to start the router, which is the start script. And that's it. The router is up and running and our InnoDB cluster is now fully set up and ready to be used. On the next video, you'll see the InnoDB cluster in action to achieve the so desired high availability.